Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to the Forgotten Film Channel. Today's Forgotten Film star is Lona Andre. Lona Andre was born on March the 2nd, 1915 in Nashville, Tennessee. Her real name is Lana Anderson. In 1932, she was one of 13 women chosen by the Western Association of Motion Picture Advertisers to be on the threshold of stardom. She was signed to a two-year Paramount contract that was not renewed. So she continued to work as a freelance agent In the year of 1934, she made headlines. She married actor Edward Norris, a marriage that was annulled just four days later. In 1936, it's rumored that she left actor James Dunn at the altar. 1938, she participated in a golfing marathon and she set a world record. She played 156 holes of golf in 11 hours and 56 minutes. Her scores weren't, weren't that bad either. She stopped acting in 1942. She got her real estate license and became a very successful agent. Lona Andre died on September the 18th, 1992 of natural causes at the age of 77 years old. During her nine-year career in the film industry, she was in 49 movies. And what I have for you today on the Forgotten Film Channel is Confessions of a Vice Baron. This was released in 1948. It's a true exploitation movie. It's even put together using snippets from other movies. So I hope that you enjoy it, and I want to thank you for tuning in. Have a great today. Hopefully tomorrow will be even better. insistent that I see you, Lombardo, that I have violated all prison rules and had you bear. Tell me, just why do you want to see me? You can't expect me to intervene at this time. No, Warden. I don't expect or ask help from anyone. I only want to dictate the story of my career. And I would like to have a copy given to every newspaper man who comes here tonight. Well, I don't see any harm in that. But why do you think the story of your life will be interesting or amusing tomorrow? I don't want it to be amusing or interesting. I want it to be thought-provoking, shocking, even frightening. I want it to be a lesson and a warning to others who might be tempted as I was by easy money. No, I haven't gone soft or sentimental. And I'm not whining, but I would like to do one decent thing before I go. Okay, I'll hear what you have to say. But I suggest that if you make it snappy, you'll have a better chance of it getting over with the newspaper boys. I'll be as brief as possible. You rang for me, sir? Yes, come in. Sit down. Now, Mr. Lombardo wants to wait a statement. I want you to take it down. Lombardo? Yes, Lombardo. Lucky Lombardo. You heard of me? Why, yes. Lombardo's time is short. He's leaving us tonight. Yes, I, I read about it in the newspapers. Everyone will be reading about me in the newspapers tonight. Sit down, Lombardo. Are you ready? Yes. This is a real-life story of the underworld case history of Lucky Lombardo, a story of vice and crime, of cupidity and greed and easy money, a story of a small-time racketeer who skyrocketed to the top in gangland and wound up 
in the electric chair. But let's start at the beginning. I was born in one of the small Balkan states, member of one of the many royal families. The name doesn't matter. During my career, I, I used many names and changed frequently my personal appearance. Like dozens of boys of my kind, I was trained and educated with the sole purpose of marrying money. Then, when I was considered ready, I, I was sent to the United States. But somehow, I, I didn't click with the rich girls, like so many other foreign phonies have done. So my money ran out, and I had to do something. Oh, oh not work. I, I wouldn't even consider that. So using the name of Count de Hoven, I found a job with an escort bureau. Hand me that date book quick. That Dizzy Morgan name's on the line. Now, let's see who's available. Prince Dimitri, too expensive. And the Duke, he's engaged for tonight. Our newest football hero, not polished enough. Ah, here's the very one for her. Count de Hoven. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Morgan. I've got exactly what you want. Yes. Oh, you're sure he's educated and refined? You know, I didn't like the last one you sent me. What? A real count? Oh, that's fine. About 28? Oh, that's just wonderful. Just about my age. Uh, I hope he plays bridge. He does? Okay, then have him report here about nine. In a dinner jacket. Yes, just have that little bridge party. Goodbye. It wouldn't take much to put you under the table, would it? No, just the sight of your husband coming through the door. <laughs> Silly boy. I haven't a husband. Anyway, I don't see why you should worry about a husband. You'd never give him any cause for complaint. What does it take to warm you up? Cocktail? No, just a nice girl. Well, don't you think I'm nice? Oh, very. Then, why are you so cold? After all, I was engaged as an escort. I'm supposed to play bridge, drink, dance, and be charming generally. But my agreement says nothing of throwing in love and necking. Credits. Well, if you're going to be so mercenary about it, perhaps that could be arranged too. Oh, Lucy? Mrs. Morgan? And you're in again. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. Shall we go? This is your lucky night, my dear. You've won every rubber, haven't you? Lucky at cards, unlucky at love. Uh, and maybe I'd rather lose a rubber, too, if it would help my love score. Mm -hmm. Well, that can't be completely oh. hopeless. Good <laughs> <laughs> evening. Here we are. At first, it was fun running around with lonely women and drinking, dancing, and lovemaking. But the pay wasn't very good, and some of my clients annoyed me. So finally, I quarreled with the manager and quit. You've got to realize that I'm running a business, and I can't afford to have my employees get temperamental. They've got to take the jobs as they come. I tell you, this woman is impossible. I really believe she's getting serious. I've been up with her four times now, and every time she's tried to make it a love affair. Well, Mrs. Morgan is one of our best customers, and she definitely demands you. There are particular reasons why I don't want to go up with her anymore. All the same, we've got to do what we can to satisfy our clients. So you give her a ring this afternoon, if you want to work for me. But you don't know this dame. She's dynamite. Dynamite or not. Her money's good, isn't it? Anyhow, you're young and healthy. I don't think a little necking more or less will hurt you. Give her a ring when you get home. Then a girl I had known got herself into trouble and came to me for help. That got me into a gem with the law.
Coroner's office. Just a moment, Bing. It's police headquarters calling you, sir. Oh, hello, Dean. What's that? A dead girl, eh? Okay, I'll have one of my staff go out with your boys. Ask them to drop by and pick him up. Okay, goodbye. Send Dr. Watson in. Yes, sir. Looks like these girls never will learn to keep out of jam. You want me, sir? Yes, Doctor. Some fellow out on Seward Street just phoned headquarters that there's a dead girl in his apartment. I want you to go out and look into it. The detectives will drop by and pick you up. Yes, sir. Is it a murder, sir? I don't know yet. It might be most anything. You see, where'd we leave off? Read that last sentence again. Um, the jury found that John Smith came to his death by natural causes. And what did you say your name is? Von Hetzen. Udo von Hetzen. And who was she? She was a manicurist. I knew her only slightly. She came here around noon and complained of feeling ill. She asked permission to lie down for a while and... Sometime afterward, I noticed that she was very quiet. And investigated. She was dead. Evidently, she died from a heart attack. So I called the police. You say she's been dead for about an hour? Approximately. A few minutes, more or less. Are you a physician? No. Then how do you account for this ether mask and these? Well, if you must know, I am interested in medical research. And you're practicing medicine without a license? I don't practice. I merely study it. I see. What do you do for a living? I'm an author. I write stories and articles for magazines. What do you make of this, Doctor? Bloodstain. Oh, that. I had a nosebleed last night. You found it in the laundry bag, didn't you? I think I'll take him down to headquarters, Doctor, for further investigation. You can't do that. Can I help if the girl died in my apartment? Probably not. But you made a mistake in your diagnosis. And there's a little matter about the exact time of death. This girl's been dead for at least eight hours. I've done nothing. I can't be arrested. You can't be, but you are. Come on, get your hat. We're going places. Well, I have nothing to worry about. This got me mixed up with a syndicate who were operating a string of shady maternity homes and hospitals specializing in illegal operations and placing unwanted babies for adoption. Someone to see you. How long are you going to be in here? Oh, 15, 20 minutes. Okay. My name's Randall. I have no money for lawyers. The public defender will do Don't be right. silly. You need the best lawyer money can buy. So you came. Exactly. However, I'm not a lawyer, but I stand ready to get you one. Let's sit down. Well, what's it all about? I've been reading about your case in the papers. A young woman found dead in man's apartment. Doctors claim death due to illegal operation. Man disclaims all guilty knowledge, right? Right. Okay, I need a clever chap like you in my organization. We specialize in such cases, handle hundreds of them. Now, if you'll agree to go to work for me, I'll help you out and pay you well. Maybe I won't get out so easily. Nonsense. All you have to do is keep your mouth shut. They can't make a case against you. Any good lawyer can spring you. Is it a deal? It's the Mary Jones, eh? I don't see how you got the idea you could have anything like that done here. Who sent you? A girlfriend who was in trouble last year gave me the address. What's her name? 
Well, she asked me not to mention her name. I see. Suppose you come back tonight at 7 o'clock. Oh, I can't do that. It's hard for me to get away. Well, I'll tell you what I can do. I might send you to a man who will do it. He's rather expensive, but a very skillful operator. Well, how much would he charge? Oh, about $200, I should think. $200? We haven't got that kind of money. Well, this fellow's pretty accommodating. If you haven't enough money, he might take some little trinket, like your wristwatch for part of it. You mean he takes jewelry in payment for his services? Merely a security. We do here sometimes. I've got a whole box full waiting for the owners to redeem them. Well, how about it, Mary? Do you want to go to this other man? Why, I don't know. What do you think? Well, I'm sure it'd be all right. Where can we find him? I'll drive the young lady out myself. You can wait here. Oh, I'd be afraid to go alone. Then we don't go. Sit well, yourself. Go ahead, Mary. We've got to get this thing over with. Well, just as you say, dear. Now you're talking sensibly. Let's go. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. It'll be quite a wait. Lady to see you, Doctor. Oh, yeah. Patient or visitor? Patient, Doctor. Won't you come in, please? was only 50. I heard that... Well, you see, some doctors accept smaller fees. But I don't want any cheap cases. My fee is $100. Well, I only have about $75 altogether. What is this small trinket you have in your bag? Let me see. I might accept this as a security for the balance. Oh, no, I, I couldn't let you have that. It has very little practical value anyhow. Just sentimental. Oh, wait. Um, if I left it here, could I redeem it later? Of course, if you want to. But girls very seldom do. All right. Nurse? I'm a little weak, I suppose. Better let the young lady rest for a while. And give her some aromatic spirits of a morning. Lie down here for a while.
little while. You'll be all right. The money was good. Trading on the mistakes and misery of women and girls. That's right. What is your price for everything? How much money you got? I've got two hundred and ten dollars. Well, our price is two hundred and fifty. But I'll tell you what I'll do. You look honest. I'll take two hundred cash, and you can sign a ninety-day note for fifty dollars. You can pay fifty dollars in ninety days, all right, can't you? Oh, I don't know. I may not be able to get my job back. Well, we should be able to place the baby that we tear up the note. Place the baby? Yeah. Get somebody to adopt it. We do that for you, too. Oh, no, no. I wouldn't do that. I'd never give him up. I want to keep my baby. Well, I sort of like you, so I'll go a little farther than usual in your case. You can leave the baby here, and we'll take care of him for five dollars a week until you can get us paid up. That'd be a big help to you any way you look at it. Let you get straightened around outside, and let the baby get stronger before you take him away. I could see him whenever I wanted to. Why, sure, any time at all. You work Saturday afternoon? No. Well, you spend them with the child. All right, I'll do it. Okay. I'll take the money, sign this note, and agreement. Agreement? Oh, yes. We have to have an agreement with you. Just a formality. There. There it is, fifty dollars. Ninety days. Simple, isn't it? There's the agreement. Just sign there. That's it. Thank you. Now, I think maybe you'd better go get your clothes and move right in. A few days rest might do you good, huh? Oh, thank you, sir. I'd like to do that. Goodbye. Goodbye. Doctor, I'm taking my baby home today, and I'm so thrilled. Your baby's gone. Gone? What do you mean? I mean he's been adopted by people who are able to take care of him. You can't do that. He's mine. He's my baby. He's better off where he is. After all, you're no fit person to raise a child. But he's mine. You can't just give him away. I paid for him. You remember signing this? You signed away all your interest in the child. You gave me the right to use my own judgment concerning it, which is exactly what I did. But I didn't understand. You never told me. What you understood and what you did are two different things. I am absolutely within my legal rights. Where is he? Who has him? They'll give him back to me. They must. Not a chance. That's all. Dr. Von Hirschen will see you in a few minutes. Yes, Doctor. Is there anything I can do for you? Why, yes. I'd like to have an examination. I've been suffering from backache, something awful. This clinic specializes in gynecology, women's ailments. I'm afraid we can't help you. What to? I'd like to talk to a doctor for a minute anyhow. Will the next patient come in, please? 
I'm the next patient, doctor. Please file this. Oh, doctor, where do I hang my clothes? It's Dr. Bowman. He'll be here in a moment. Are you here for an examination? Yes, I am. All right. You can put this on while you're waiting. examination. I didn't know I was busting into an insane asylum. Why, that woman is crazy calling me a detective. I don't want any treatments in here. I don't believe either one of them. Neither do I. They are dicks, all right. You have to be extra careful for a few days. But eventually the law caught up with us and I had to move to another city. There I became a professional procurer for a vice syndicate. I frequented clubs and bars and night spots, trapping girls, so young and good-looking ones preferred, for resort keepers. In this racket, my early education and training of, in the arts of being charming to women came of good use. <laughs> to your senses. I'll never do what you want me to. How to bruise you up. I'm saving you for a very special customer. When will learn to Neither your father nor anyone else you respect will ever see you again. And in a couple of months, you'd die rather than have them even find you. You talk to her, Maisie. This time I had become hardened, cynical. I stopped at nothing. How do you get that one? I don't think it is time she should go home. Where is she living? 
Sid. You better not go home right now. Get home with me. Where do you live? What's it to you? Shut up, Brian Cross. Look at your ears up. Yeah, you. Stop it, Bruce. That's Tony Colonial. He'll murder you. I'll drive you both home. You guys stay here. Not far now. Milk's will be there. Oh, I'm glad. I'm awfully tired. I want to take a good long rest. Yeah. That's what you need. Good long rest. Just lock her up for a couple of days without food. 
still work all right. years I made many underworld contacts and gradually came to realize that I was only a piker. Well, so I learned where the real big money was made. So I recruited a tough gang, moved in and took over control of the white slave racket. I became a big shot. Lucky Lombardo, king of the red lights. Every dive keeper in town paid tribute to me. When they got obstinate, my goons worked them over. Oh, sit down, eh? Mm-hmm. Hey, you're not going to get there. Where's the boss? Here I am. What? Hey, we told you to get out and you're still here. Are you going to pay off? No, I won't be shaken down. Okay, baby. I wonder what this is all about. Why are we gathered here? Well, I don't know exactly, but the boss is certainly all steamed up about something. Even you numbskulls ought to know what's wrong. Business is bad. You're falling down on your job. Falling down is right. to know what you are here for, huh? Well, I'll tell you. I spent years building up a business. Last year it paid more than two million dollars, and this year it is less than one. What do you think I hire you for? To ruin my business? Well, you might call it a business at that. That is a business. The most profitable in town. And the rottenness. We got a lot of reports from our district managers. Everywhere business is rotten. And why? Because you people are falling down. Listen to this from Adam Swift. Business is falling off because my customers are tired of the same old faces. We need new blood. The same story from all our best spots. We need new faces. You. That's what I pay you to get from me. And you are not delivering. What's the matter with you? Are the dance halls running anymore? Yeah, but every police woman and matron in town is my number. I'm even afraid to dance with the hostess for fear of getting pinched. And what if you are pinched? Spanish here will spring you. I'm not quite so sure about that, Lombardo. The town is tightening up. This new DA and the police commissioner are clamping the lid on pretty tight. Fine mouthpiece you are. I pay you the biggest salary in town and you say you can't even spring a guy. I didn't say I couldn't. I said I wasn't sure. The heat is on pretty bad. And what's your alibi, Lou? Enjoying the town too much to go out and work? No, Chief. Just letting things cool off a little. I had a close shave on that last trip to Pittsburgh. And after all, the man acts no joke. Leave Pittsburgh alone for a while. Where did you say you came from? Oh, down south. All right. Go back there and visit your old friends. They won't suspect you and pickings ought to be good. Take your brother Harry along. A lot of pretty girls down there. Okay, Chief, that's a swell idea. Play a dance hall. Spend a lot of money. Make them think that you are rich. But show results. Get me some good-looking young girls. And you take over the school job. No, Lombardo. I won't do that. What's the matter? Losing your nerve because a little punk bumped herself off last month? Well, maybe that has something to do with it. I can't choose men who have lost their nerve. And that's okay, too. I've been wanting to quit for quite a while. All right. You're through. 
Get out! Tony, you're taking over the school pickups. You know the ropes. That's all. Get going. is to lie quiet for a while. Don't press your luck too far. Why not? I am lucky Lombardo. Nothing can stop me. I was. And I want you to drive out competition. Start a cleanup campaign, a crusade, to chase those women off the streets. See this in the paper? Yeah, tough luck, wasn't it? I beg your pardon. Can you tell me if the James family lives somewhere around here? Why, yes, about two blocks right down this street. Why, that's just the way you're going. Do you mind riding and showing me the house? Oh, no. I guess not. Computers worked everywhere, kidnapping or enticing young girls into lives of shame. Right over there, gentlemen, the box office. It's exciting. It's the sound. You put me five cents. Well, there better be good. 25 cents in here, just a quarter. Put me five cents, a quarter. Hey, here, a quarter, 25 cents. Give the girls dance, 25. Thank you. Put me five cents in here. Thank better you. Better be good, too. Thank you, sir. Girls here. Oh, don't be that way. 
stick around. Well, listen, I, I'm going to get out of this place right now. Come on. I should never get here. What's the trouble? Why'd you send for me? There's something over there I thought you might be interested in. Yeah. Don't say I am. Frank, the other blonde over there. As soon as you can, you and Tony horn into the table next to him, see? When I give you the high sign, start the old Tony fight. Make it plenty tough and real. See, you don't hurt none of them punks, understand? You just say you're going to use the strong arm stuff on that, do you? Why not? We had a long talk with the big chief last night. <laughs> he's getting soft. He says Booze was all right, but he's a little skittish on the girl in the dope racket. He wants to quit. What? He can't quit. Nobody can quit the rackets and live. Not when they're in as deep as he is, anyway. Why don't you let him quit? Don't be the big shot then. I am the big shot now. He only thinks he is. But I need him for a front for a while anyway. Why the girl? Chief's bugs about cute little blondes. I'm gonna give it to him as bait. That'll keep him quiet until I need him. Now let everybody dance. Take it away, Al. <laughs> well, shall we dance, gentlemen? Oh, what? 
The American people are ordinarily easygoing and apathetic. But we became so bold that finally the city became aroused and a new district attorney was elected on a reform platform. My lawyer warned me and advised me to lie low for a while. But I was tough. I thought that I was immune to the law. And I made the fatal mistake of underestimating my enemy. Now we are getting somewhere. Making the streets safe for our children. That's the stuff. You get rid of those cheap streetwalkers. I don't like the looks of things at all. What do you mean? The new DA had me in this morning and asked me a lot of questions. Said that he had heard that I had defended white slavers and prostitutes several times. Wanted to know why I'd so suddenly become interested in cleaning up the city. <laughs> oh, yeah? So what? You are a public spirited citizen, aren't you? Oh, you won't understand. This fellow's different. We haven't got him fooled at all. He asked me what I thought about this. the DA knows more than we think. If he should happen to pick up one of those girls in a raid, we'd go to the chair for kidnapping. By the time he's able to find them, they would rather die than talk. They don't want their folks to know what became of them. Just the same, I wish you'd lay low for a while. Ah, quit worrying. I can handle this tough DA, if I have to. I'm Lucky Lombardo. I'm a big shot. Then, just at this time, fate took a hand. I met a girl who didn't fall for me, and the inevitable happened. I feel like a different man when I'm with you. All those little walks and rides, they make me forget my business worries. It's much too pleasant today to get sentimental. Let's feed the pigeons. I fell in love with this girl. I, Lucky Lombardo, I had made a mockery out of love. fallen for her, haven't you? I'm nuts about her. Well, why don't you grab her and take her to some hideout and break her? I don't want to be swung that way. I want her to love me. I wish I hadn't brought her to town. Why do you say that? Because you have gone nuts about her. Neglecting business. Everything's going screwy while you moon around. You talk to me that way. Listen, Lombardo. I've been with you longer, and more loyal than anyone. And I think I ought to tell you, word's gone out that you've gone soft. And if you don't snap out of it, some of these up-and-coming young punks are going to grab the whole racket right out of your hand. The turn, determined to have her at all costs. But she happened to have been a schoolmate of one of my henchmen, and he helped her to escape from me. He defied me. Where is she? Wouldn't you like to know? Yeah. And I'm going to know. I'll 
get you to the slug water. I told you to lay off of Harry. That her, boy. So you won't talk, huh? Give me that cigarette. I have to leave town for a while. It's getting too hot. Where's Lois? I'm taking her with me. Well, um, she isn't here anymore. What do you mean, she isn't here? No. She's where you'll never get your dirty hands on her again. She's married. Lois married? You are lying. I was beat and tortured him, but he wouldn't talk. So, finally, he was killed. This was the great chance the new district attorney was looking for. And I soon found myself on trial for my life. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The Superior Court for the Fifth District is now in session. The Honorable Thomas Ratcliffe, judge presiding. still contemptuous, disdainful. I was the great lucky Lombardo, but this district attorney was different. He was dynamite. Gentlemen of the jury, when you retire to your chambers to deliberate on the evidence in this case, and when you bring in your verdict, I want you to feel and to know that you are not merely deciding the fate of James Lombardo, but that you are serving notice upon the wolves of the underworld everywhere that an aroused public has decreed that their day is done, that the rule of the six-shooter is ended. And to the people of America, I say, our citizenry must be protected from this enemy within our gates. Our institutions, our conventions must be respected, our laws obeyed, if we are to survive as a great nation. Our men, women and children, must be free to go about their peaceful pursuits without fear and without the sinister shadow of organized crime barring their way. Gentlemen, with this thought, I leave the case in your hands. Well, here I am, lonely and friendless, and just a matter of hours away from the electric chair. In the last few weeks, I've had plenty of time to think, and so, before I go, I want to leave this warning to any or all who might be tempted by the record's easy money. There is no such thing as easy money. Money from the records is uneasy, tainted money that brings only unhappiness, despair and destruction. Don't look upon the gangster as a glamorous figure. He is just a prowling, skulking beast of prey, despised by all decent people. Don't think you can outsmart the law, because it will surely get you in the end. If I, Lucky Lombardo, rich and powerful, couldn't get away with it, how can you do? Let my fate be a warning to you that crime does not pay. Mm -hmm.